the other piece we wanted to, to bring up here is we now have a final tally of um, something that Kamala Harris directly defended, although not yep. that effectively. Um, the fact that Democrats spent millions of dollars in Republican primaries to try to get the nominees that they saw as the most extreme. And especially, I mean, it was nominees who were extreme on abortion, but also on, you know, uh, stop the steal, like election conspiracy nonsense, something that... Kamala Harris and Democrats across the board say is a real existential threat, and then you're out there spending, I have the numbers here, $53 million boosting these candidates <laughs> mm -hmm. that, you know, President Biden is out there giving big speeches warning about democracy. what a threat they are to democracy yeah. and all of this. Like, I mean, those two things can't coexist. So yes. anyway, it's a long way of saying. We now have the final tally of how they did with all of this. Let's go ahead and put this up on the screen if we didn't already. Democratic meddling pays off. Well, did it? Let's find out. The final tally is in. Democrats succeeded in boosting right-wing candidates in six out of the 13 Republican primaries that they meddled in. So pretty much a 50-50 uh, chance of success that they have here. And I mean, listen, it's a big gamble that they're taking here because we all know how wrong the polls have been historically. So you may think that this gives you a better shot of winning in the fall. You may think that ultimately this puts you in better position, hold on to the House, hold on to the Senate, et cetera, but very possible some of these people ultimately get through. Now, in a lot of these races, the um, when these more extreme candidates won, it did shift the sort of prognosticators analysis and ratings of those races towards Democrats. So the analysts are saying that this was a smart strategy, putting like the ethics and morality of it aside. Um, but again, gigantic gamble here. And something I've been thinking about lately that I may do a monologue mm. on is we talk here a lot about candidate quality because, you know, it's like these are interesting personalities and it's hilarious to dunk on Oz for his crudite situation mm -hmm. or like Herschel Walker and whatever things that come out of his mouth. But ultimately, I'm not a big believer that candidate quality matters all that much. I completely agree with you. So they're betting a lot here on candidate quality really being central. Yes. And There's no evidence to back that up. Statistically. Especially, yeah. now, listen, I think at the Senate level, it has more of an impact. Right. At the House level, I don't think it really matters totally at agree. all. Unless you have something that is completely, like, grabs tons of media to way outside of the norm. The House tends to just be about what are the national wins. So if you put these people in place, you know, you help them win their primaries, you're, you really got to hope that the national wins end up going the way that you want them to go. Oh, absolutely, Crystal. You're, I'm glad that you put that. But remember this. The most polarizing members of the House, let's say on both sides, Ilhan Omar probably, Marjorie Taylor Greene. They both won their primaries, folks. Yeah. They get reelected actually quite easily. Yeah. Now, do they run behind Biden or Trump? Yeah, actually they do, uh, which is a fascinating story in its own right. But they still win. And most of the people there are like, yeah, it's kind of annoying how they get all this media attention, but whatever. You well, know? And those are people who are legit famous. Yes. Famous. Like famous. Random. Yeah member of Congress who like, you know, said something about January 6th or whatever. No one knows who the hell yeah, this person is, what so they said, what they did, whatever. So uh, again, I just think, I think it's a hypocritical bet that they've placed. I think it's a foolish gamble that they're making here because I do actually think that these things are serious, especially in the statewide races. Like when you're talking about the governors, mm -hmm. the secretaries of state, the attorneys general, these are people who really might be consequential in the next election if it's close, and some of whom have outright said like, oh, I wouldn't have certified this election if it was me. Like, that's a legit problem. They're playing with fire here, but uh, so far they feel like this is working out for them. We'll see if they still feel that way on election day. I think candidate quality really died, what, 2010? That really just made it, I mean, I remember, because the guy who represented my district was this guy, Chet Edwards. It was interesting, yeah. actually, because he was the Democrat who represented the most Republican district of any Democrat. Mm. It was like R plus 26. Yeah. Jo uh, George W. Bush used to live there, and he got reelected year after year yeah. after year. It was wild, right? Yeah. And then 2010, and he You're lost so by the right. biggest margin in the entire country. That was, that was yeah. the year I ran for Congress, yeah. and there was a huge um, wipeout of these like the blue, blue dog dogs. Democrats yeah, yeah. That there was one in Virginia who represented Southwestern Virginia. I think his, his name was Boucher, mm -hmm. and um, he'd been there again forever. Yeah. Chet and was like, there longer than I was alive. You know, at the this time. is a this like, is a, a small rural area. Like yeah. people knew him personally. Yes. And he had, he was like the old school of, you know, I'm going to deliver this and that amenity or road or bridge mm -hmm. or whatever my, for my district. That was his politics. And yeah, he gets wiped out that year. And that was the story uh, across the country. It's just a matter of 
the more politics have become purely national, the less that the candidate quality matters. I agree. And I kind of get it. Because, Me too. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I would look at, like, you know, Fetterman in Pennsylvania. I don't, like, yeah, I wish he hadn't had a stroke for his sake and for all of our sakes and that he was 100%. But would I even think about voting against him based on, no, I wouldn't because the the issues and his alliance with like in that direction, that matters so much more to me. So, you know, I think that people just vote on these more partisan leanings and divides and the way they feel about how the economy is going. And I don't know that they're really analyzing. In fact, there's a poll out this morning. One of the worst candidates in the country has got to be Herschel Walker. Yeah. Poll out this morning has him up in Georgia. Yeah. Even yeah. Raphael Warnock is, you would, right. he's a very good candidate. I yes. mean, the man was a, you know, he's a preacher. He's phenomenal on the stump. People really genuinely like him and all of these things. And, and he's up against like one of the worst candidates in the country. And, doesn't really matter that much. So that's how it goes, people. Yeah. I think you're. I, mean, I just want to underscore that. I mean, Chet Edwards, that guy in my district, he was like the veterans guy. He like saved all this money for veterans. He was on the VA committee. I remember people I was growing up with. They're like, I vote Republican, but I like Chet. And then in 2010, they were like, Screw nope. Obama, and like that was it. They it just was had like, nothing oh, to do with he's going to support Pelosi for Speaker. B- big nope. And actually, Forget he it. even ran ads saying I'm against Nancy Pelosi, and he still lost by like 32 points. Yeah. Like yeah, at that yeah, level, they all just tried. To do. In that year, they all tried to run away. Yeah from Pelosi was the big one yeah. and Obama. And it didn't matter. They were like, you're part of that party. I, I don't care. Yeah, I don't care if I know you. I don't care what you've done. I don't care you try to make yourself different. Like, and it's, I mean, and this is the same in, in both directions. Yeah, so anyway, that's part of how I'm looking at these midterms. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.